Hello, my name is Elaine Hutton, and we are going to review substitutions. So we're going to quickly review some important substitution rules that you may have forgotten or just were not aware of, which means you need to review and read the NFHS rules book. So either team may substitute an unlimited number of players from the bench provided they have reported to the nearest official and are beckoned on by the center referee or the closest referee on a two-man system. And this is when a goal is scored or when a player is injured. Remember, stop the clock. Signal on the coach or healthcare professional to enter the field. If the clock is stopped for an injury, the player or goalkeeper must leave the field and may be replaced with a substitute. Please remember that the goalkeeper must leave the field. There has been some confusion regarding that. Also, a player that is exhibiting signs and symptoms and behaviors that are consistent with a concussion must be removed from the match. And if an injury happens at a penalty kick situation, the substituted player cannot take the penalty kick. When a player from either team is cautioned, remember, stop the clock. The player must leave the field and may be replaced with a substitute from the bench. Now the caution player may not re-enter the game until the next legal opportunity for their team. And they may want to play down a player until the next legal opportunity for their team, and they may do so. They may come in when they are beckoned onto the field by the center referee. When a player from either team is disqualified, the team shall not substitute the dismissed player. And when the team substitutes for a disqualified goalkeeper, then a field player must be removed. Please remember that when a player is injured and they are bleeding and have an open wound or they have blood on their jersey or shorts, the player must leave the field. The player may be replaced with a substitute from the bench. When entry is taking place on a corner kick, a throw-in or goal kick, there may be an unlimited amount of substitutes for either team, but they must have reported to the score or official area prior to that dead ball situation. Please remember that the clock shall be stopped when a substitute by the team in the lead is beckoned onto the field in the final five minutes of the second period only. And when a team repeatedly substitutes to consume time, the referee shall stop the clock during that substitution and shall notify the coach of the offending team that this repetition of repeatedly substituting may be construed as unsporting conduct. So you're the referee, you make the call. Magic player number two is injured. After examining the player, you stop the clock and you beckon on the player's coach or athletic trainer to the field to attend to that injured player. The below may happen. A, athletic trainer for Magics attends the injured player while Coach Rabbit gives instructions to the players on the field. B, Coach Rabbit attends the injured player and gives instructions as she walks back to her bench area. C, opposing Bluebirds, Coach Robin calls his teams to the sideline and gives them instructions from there. D, Coach Rabbit, while on the sidelines, calls for the substitute for that magic player that was injured and gives instructions to the substitute. Ruling, legal or illegal for A, B, C, and D. You make the call. Legal for A, B, C, and D. Again, you're the referee, you make the call. Substitute A12 reports to the score as the kickoff takes place, eight minutes elapse before the first opportunity for a substitution occurs. The referee beckons A12 on the field. However, A12 is withdrawn by the coach of Team A. What's the call? The ruling is substitute A12 is now a player because he or she was beckoned onto the field by the referee. Therefore, player A12 must enter the game once beckoned. So for more substitution situations and rulings, please refer to the NFHS rules book.
So I wanna wish you all a fun and safe spring season, and I hope to see you out there. Thank you.